welcome to my channel. Um, thanks for following me. The quilting chick, that's me. Sister chick really appreciates it. What do you suppose my pin cushions look like? Do you think they might be chicks? <laughs> Let me show you a couple of my pin cushions. We are going to be making these chick pin cushions today. And this is kind of a big one. She has, she can hold a lot of pins, but I like to keep her out um, on the long arm. Now, I made this out of scraps from a quilt, so a lot of people make them out of log cabin blocks, and that's actually what we're gonna be making today. But I just wanna show you a few different things you can do. There's always a comb on a chicken, right? So I used rickrack, and I'm not gonna be using rickrack today, I'm out. I also used prairie points, and then I was a little bit on, you know, steroids here. And I made uh, two prairie points together, so she has quite the little beak there. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna do the simple beak today because she's just as cute. And then I have little black buttons for eyes. There's her tail, and I use these to put needles in, but I no longer stuff my tails so they're fluffy. I, instead, I use prairie points. Now, this little chicky, was made from two half square triangles and you'll see how it works and they were about four and a half inches or five inches on the half square triangles this is about the size of the chick we're going to be making today oh and by the way you will find all of the measurements and the pattern for this chick on my website it's they're really simple don't be intimidated i have been making these for years even before i was a quilter i've had a thing for chicks and chickens but there's her little um comb with rick rack again and um and her little beak with prairie points and then i've got these bead eyes that we're going to be sewing on to the chick here's one i call her my hippie chick <laughs> Isn't she just adorable? This was just a piece of trim that was just all fluffy. In fact, it's actually, it's yarn, but not trim, but, and she has, if you can see under that trim, see those aqua blue eyes? I love aqua. She just has a little piece of felt for a beak, and she has the two prairie points here for the tail. But um, I just, she's a lot of fun. Now she is filled, and she has a really good uh, weight, and she's filled good with, um, I put uh, crushed walnut shells in, and that is my filling of choice. But you can put rice in them if you want. This one's filled with rice, and she is a little bit floppy, but um, she still holds the pin wheel, pins well. Now, this is one of my faves. I'm just gonna show you four today. She's made with a log cabin block, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now, here's another idea for a comb. This is just felt cut out, look at that, and then just sewn in the seam. And her beak is actually flannel, just I sewed two pieces of flannel together. And again, there's her little prairie point tail right there. So these are the supplies that you're going to need. You're gonna need a bunch of scraps. Now I'm choosing to do red and yellow and look at these, these uh, prints. Some of them even have little chicks on them. And I just pulled these out of my one and a half inch scrap bin, or it's not really a scrap bin. Quilters save little pieces, but you can, um, you can do this with scraps. So I will put the exact number of one and a half inch strips that you need and what size to make them and the order that you sew them in on my website. Then you're going to need the tail. And this is the tail that I've chosen to use. And it is a piece of red fabric that is three inches square. Now this is how you fold a prairie point, it's so simple. You take it from the point and we're gonna fold it to this point. So you fold it over like that and you press it and you have a triangle. And then you fold the long point over again to this point. And look at that, that is a, what we call a prairie point. When you fold it, you have a nice folded flat edge and then you're going to have a double folded flat edge. And I put two of those together. Again, this one was three inches and this one is two and a half inches and we will sew those in the back side of our little chick so she has a tail. I'm going to use a prairie point for her beak as well. And you use a one and a half inch square of fabric 
yellow of course, and there's her little beak. We're gonna put it in so these open ends are at the bottom. For her comb today, because I'm out of rickrack, I just cut a one and a half inch by three inch strip of red fabric. And I am going to put little tucks in it, just finger tucks like this, as I sew it in the top of her head. So she is going to have a ruffly comb like that. Don't you think that's darling? Something else you'll need um, is some little beads for the eyes I, or buttons or embroidery floss and you could stitch them in. I also fill all of my pin cushions with crushed walnut shells and you can get the best value on crushed walnut shells. I've had this bag forever, made so many pin cushions with it. And you can get this at a pet store because I believe reptiles and that like to lay in, in this as bedding. Very, very cheap. It's like, I think this bag was under $10. Uh, other supplies to fill it, you're gonna need a funnel, a measuring cup, a ruler to cut out your strips, and um, we're going to be making this one out of the log cabin block. Now, a log cabin block traditionally always has a red center. Do you know the reason for that? Here's a little quilting trivia. Because it's a very old pattern and it's, it's the heart of the home. And this is like a log cabin that goes around. And I'm going to show you how to sew that today and then sew it into a chick. It's very, very simple. But we're going to have two of these log cabin blocks up to make our, our chick pin cushion. So um, here we go. I'm at my machine and ready to sew the log cabin. And it's really a simple block. You just have to stop and think if you're gonna do it two-toned like I am, just sew every other color. So we're gonna start with a one and a half inch red square and we're going to put a one and a half inch yellow square right on top of it and we're going to sew I say we, I guess I'm sorry. I'm going to sew at a quarter of an inch seam, okay? Now, I don't want to get up and run to the sewing machine every time I sew a little seam. So I am going to finger press these seams open and I'm gonna hold it open like this. Finger press, kind of pull it open and you can finger press, or I love to use my Violet Craft roller. And I'm just gonna press it down with that. The next piece that I put on is going to be a yellow piece. And it is going to go right on top of this, like so. Let's get it lined up here so we have a nice, square block. Then finger press it open again. And I'm just finger pressing these seams open. Now I didn't use my roller. I just smashed it with my thumbs like that and it's okay for this. So then I want a red block to go across here across the top, and I'm gonna put this red one on, just like that. Are you getting the idea of how to sew this log cabin block? So easy, and there's so many options you can do with a log cabin block. So I'm going to finish sewing this block and then when it's done, we'll make the chick pin cushion.
so I have three sides of this sewn, and in the bottom side, see the little peekaboo? This is my hole where I'm going to turn it right here. But what I'm going to do is sew the little tails on. Now, this is the side where my comb is, and I want those to be right back on that side. So I'm just going to eyeball the center and pin them in, matching these two side seams. And I'm just going to pin it down. Normally I wouldn't pin it, but I'm going to pin it because I have <clears throat> the little tail feathers in that I don't want to wiggle around until they're sewn. So there they are. Now I'm going to Lock it with a back stitch. Okay, there's my lock. Pulling this pin out before I get to it. Okay. And then I'm going to lock this with another back stitch, the end. All right. Look at the shape. Isn't that cute? Let's turn it. It'll be even cuter, I promise. So we're going to go in through this hole in the bottom. Uh, oh, here it is. <laughs> this bottom. <laughs> not, not that bottom. And we're going to push it out through the hole. And our little chick is going to pop up right before our eyes. Push these corners out and push this corner out. And let's push the top of the head corner out. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? There's her, there's her little beak and her comb and her tail. Now let's fill it. Let's make a pin cushion. Okay, let's turn this little chick into a pin cushion. I'm going to open up the bottom seams and stick my funnel in, holding it like this. And I'm going to scoop out some of my ground walnut shells and just shake them down in. I think that's it. So we're just going to whip stitch it shut. Now I have in mama chick over here, I have a threaded needle and I'm going to just whip stitch this shut as tight as I can. I'm going to show you how to put a knot in a needle without ever having to tie a knot.
first you thread your needle and I'm going to do it a double thread. So pull my thread so it's even and I'm going to hold my needle in my right or my left hand, whichever, whichever works for you. If you're left handed, the other hand, I'm going to hold it like this, wrap it around several times. Oh, about five. And then I'm going to hold that down, put my fingers right on top of it. And I'm going to pull the thread through and look at that. I have a nice big knot in my thread. And what I'm going to do with that is sew on a couple of these beads so my little chick has eyeballs and can see. So she can see her other chickies. So what I'm going to do is just go through, go through about here like this. I'm going to go through the bead and go back through again. Pulling that bead down. Then I'm going to go through, put another bead on my needle and go back through. And I will go through this bead a couple of times. Then I'm just going to tie this off in a knot behind the little eye like that. There's really no weight on this, so that's enough to hold it into place. We'll go one more time. And we have got ourselves a sister chick pin cushion. Now I'm going to bury the thread. Go right behind the eye and straight down into the pincushion and out into the red. I'm going to bury this thread a little bit more. And there you have it. Isn't that just cute? Here's my cute little chick pincushion. Don't you love it? I do. Um, you can see the little block, how it plays out on there. And look, I tested it. It even works. Look at those pins in there. But isn't this a darling little comb with the little ruffle and her little beak? And then there's her tail. So it's super fun and easy to make. It's super fast. And I'm going to put the link to a PDF pattern on my website so you can make your own chick pin cushion and um, maybe you can do what I've done and oh my goodness make a few <laughs> all right thanks for checking in we'll see you next week and if you like what you see I'd love a couple of thumbs up or a subscribe bye